Hello, everybody, and good morning. Um, I wanted to give you my top things to think about before you get um, a fountain. Um, the first thing, style. What style do you want? Um, you know, make sure it fits into your garden. Uh, we have two very different styled fountains, and that is because they're different. We have a Zen garden over there that we put our other one there, and it just fits in the style of it, fits in really well. Um, kind of looks old world, just fits into the environment. Over here, we wanted it to stand out more and almost be kind of like a statue. So we chose this one, but still went with a much cleaner, plainer design because our garden really just doesn't lend to ornate types of pottery or statues. Two, think about the color. What color do you want? Do you want this kind of has a green tinge to it? You can't really see it because this one, when we got it, was a floor model. So a lot of it is faded off of it. But it definitely did have a finish, somewhat of a finish on it, but looks more closer to natural cement. They will be your least maintenance as far as any kind of, unless you wanted to dye it later or something like that, you don't really have to do a lot. But the darker ones, um, I think they're called acid wash. They don't hold their color. So you're going to get somewhere between three and five years out of the color on it. And then you're going to have to stain it every year or two. Um, there is cement stains that you can use. I just use regular Mimwax. Whatever I got in the shed, <laughs> if it's dark, it goes on it. And I always mix it with like a black, a real black, dark, dark brown stain to get it back to a very dark color. And it looks really horrible when I first do it because it's so dark. But within a couple weeks, that sun gets to it and it fades it to the brown. If you start with just the brown color, you're going to, it's going to fade faster. And in a month or two, it's not gonna be the color you want. So start darker than you want. Um, I didn't have any problem with residues or anything. I let it kind of sit for a few days to dry out. It seems fine. I've had it for two years and now it's ready for a restain. But that's something to think about if you do get the darker or anything with a finish, not quite this light finish, but um, a darker finish, you're, you are going to have to um, restain it. The acid washes, they don't last. They're not gonna last or they haven't found anything that stays put on the cement yet. Um, there may be new ones that they're making that are more manufactured that might have a finish that lasts, but I haven't really seen any. Even the resin finishes um, eventually fade out. So you either have to spray paint them or do something like that with it. What it's made out of, three, the weight. Think about the weight. Um, if something goes wrong with it or you need to re-level it or just getting it back where you need it to go, how are you gonna do that? Um, so the weight really matters. And it's wonderful that they'll dump it in your driveway, but you need to have a plan for how you're gonna get it back and then how you're gonna maintain it. Again, if it goes off level or if it um, has issues, you know, it collapsed, you can't get to the cord, things like that. Um, I think I'm, we're on four, maintenance, <laughs> maintenance. They require a lot of maintenance. Um, anybody who's had one knows that. Um, it doesn't matter where you put it. They grow algae. Uh, they're, it's impossible not to. Um, algae thrives on sunlight. You put it in the sun. It, so we'll, we'll, we'll use this as two. Placement and I think placement of your fountain and maintenance go together because the experts are going to tell you that oh put it in the sun or put it in the shade algae algae thrives on sunlight okay well both of ours were in the shade at one time we had a big willow tree huge 30 foot willow tree that draped over top of our fountain 
Well, if you put it in the shade, unless it's a shade of a pavilion or a building, that's not gonna work because when you put it in the shade, most of the time, it's the shade of trees. There's either big canopies up above, smaller canopies, or plants around it. But what are plants when they fall? Nitrogen. Well, nitrogen gets in the water and it creates the algae growth anyway. And let's face it, unless it's pitch black, there's light getting to your, your fountain. And I gotta say, of the two, the easiest one to maintain is the Zen Garden one. It grows the algae, but the sun, and keeping it in the sun now, and not having a tree flanking over it, you can solarize it. So when you drop the water out, half a day of sun beating on it on a sunny day kills all that algae off dry and the sun solarizes it. I don't even have to scrub it most of the time. Sometimes I'll give it a light. I just rub my hands along it, make sure it's not slimy. It's good to go. Um, size does matter in fountains. This is much harder to maintain than the Zen Garden one that has half the water capacity. This at 50 gallons plus is, you don't want to be dropping 50 gallons of water every, I mean, this, it costs money. It's like my frog pond, it's like emptying my frog pond every week. You don't want to do that. It doesn't, it doesn't exactly work. Um, these pipes do not drain fast. So you're going to have to unplug it. Usually I do it at night if I'm going to drain them and then just go to bed on it. Uh, but if you forget and you want to do it during the day, you have a barbecue coming up or whatever, then it can take a while. Have a shop back, at least a small shop back that you can vacuum out something this large and get the debris out of. Um, placement also, the thing you have to think about, we have a we purposely set this so that our seating area was right next to it. We could really enjoy the sounds of it. Hopefully the sounds, it has a beautiful sound, is not washing out my voice. I'm hoping not, and it's not annoying in this video. But the, the problem with the pavilion near it is all the debris, powders up there, the birds get up there, they eat their seeds, and it all in a rainstorm or a windstorm just comes right down into the fountain. So think about how close you put it to anything like, that has a roof because that debris is all going to get in there. And again, um, I do skim it every morning before I turn it on. I turn them off at night to save my pump time. There's no sense in it running all night long. Another thing to think about is what chemicals are you willing to use? If you have fountains this size or more, you are going to have to use something. And unless you are wasting so much water and you are dropping that water out every day, you are going to have to use something. The algae is vicious, vicious. Anybody who's had these knows that it's a headache. It's a headache. Um, this is one option, algae fix. These are for ponds, but I've kind of come to realize and you'll see it in my video, which I will link at the end, that these are made for ponds, meaning a pond where fish are floating around. People aren't swimming in it. They don't have their hands in it. They aren't as close contact as these kind of fountains. These have contact warnings for skin and a bunch of other warnings that I'll show you in the other. I'll read it to you. So it's something to think about. I'm not willing to use this with my grandchildren um, or their friends playing in my fountains, but it is an option. Vinegar, vinegar, white distilled vinegar works fabulous. But here's the problem. White distilled vinegar, as people constantly leave in comments below, to, instead of me pulling my weeds, to kill the weeds. Well, unfortunately, it kills everything. It doesn't care. Um, most of the time it does not get to the roots, but it definitely puts a hurting on the plant. So this type of vinegar splashing all over the place is going to put a hurting on any vegetation you have around. It will kill earthworms. It is a known used product to kill your earthworms. 
if you have a problem with too many worms um, in your driveways, wherever, just Google it. This is an earthworm killer. Um, it'll kill all the microbes in your soil. So if you're trying to get a nice garden to go around your, your fountain, I know people don't like the splashing on their plants. If you get the right kind of plants, they love it. They absolutely love it. And that leads me to the third thing you can use peroxide and again in the video where I show you how I maintain mine this has been my most useful product to use I'm comfortable with it being around my grandchildren I'm comfortable with it being around my birds uh, please do not leave me comments saying I'm killing the birds by using it it does not kill birds it is in the water presently already that is just a lack of education uh, the actual active ingredient in peroxide dissipates quite quickly over a few hours time. Uh, it is already in the water. It is what is cities use to clean the water um, for the most part. This, chlorines, things like that. I'm sure there's various other chemicals that I'm not even aware of in my water. But my cho I, I bathe my children in it. I bathe myself in it. it it's fine birds are not dropping dead um it's fine and the one thing benefit i have seen unlike vinegar which will kill your plants or at least put a hurting on them the plants thrive with a little bit of that splash of peroxide it's a tiny bit in the water i'm not using a ton of it very small amount you kind of have to play with it to get your ratio of what's going to work but what I have found is the plants are so healthy and thriving around my fountain. Because they're wet all day, because they're that type of, you, you can kind of see some fungus, some gooeyness at the bottom. I have none of that in my Zen garden anymore because the peroxide helps with that kind of fungal disease control. So it's not only helping in my pond, it is helping outside my pond also the small amount that they are getting exposed to so i have had i'm not preaching use whatever you want you can treat it like a pool if you want there's pools everywhere i uh, i would get a suitable pump for that if you're going to use chlorine or anything like that but people have pools they go to water parks they do all kinds of birds are exposed to chlorine all the time in the water that is already in that fountain coming from my city probably your well has some treatment in it so that water has something in it the birds have adapted to it i don't think it's the most horrible thing if you want to treat it like a pool um that may be your only if you get a, a, a fountain larger than this to keep it where you're not wasting water all the time okay safety that's the other thing you want to think about safety is a big thing with these a lot of people don't think about this as a pool, but it is a pool. If my grandchildren say I was in the kitchen getting a barbecue plate ready or something like that, and my grandchild is back here and she trips and she hits her head, if she falls into the, the water and she doesn't know how to get herself out of, she could drown. Um, she could grab the top of it and pull it on top of her. These are hundreds of pounds of weight. Even the top pieces are extremely heavy. They can be pulled over onto a child and hurt them. And no matter how many times I tell my grandchildren to never touch the top, they forget and they brace themselves with it when they're playing in it. So you have to be sitting there watching them at all times with a fountain of this size. Um, if any kind of water, two inches of water, a child can drown. So you want to always think about that and are you willing to keep an eye on your children when they're in your backyard. Um, anytime you have a water feature of any sort, you have to think about those things that has this amount of water in it and rocks around it that they could trip on and get hurt. Um, and also pulling it down on them. They have nothing that braces them on the top. They literally just sit one piece on top of the other. So they're just primed for um, falling. Um, as the children get older, they can be taught that. But you get a seven, eight year old kid and they want to climb things or they're just feeling like they're going to live forever. You know, we all were there. You have to worry about that. 
and um, and it falling on them and a hospital trip. So it's something to think about. Um, they can be unsafe if they're not supervised. So put it somewhere where you're gonna be comfortable with it. Access to your drains and your electric. It's a good idea when you're setting your pad and leveling your pad to put a PVC piece under there. We did not, we did not think about that, but we did leave a channel between the blocks. So it can be dug out and we didn't have any problem getting the cord and you'll see that at the end of this video, getting the cord through. But that's something to think of and you might want to put a, you know, a sizable PVC um, piece under in the ground under your fountain block or you know level with it um, so that you can pull your cords through you also want to leave a very large gap anywhere you're going to set the drain because that is a problem we didn't think about and we put it right down on the pad and you need to the drain is so small for something like that it clogs immediately with um, even small debris that you can't skim out and then you stop, it won't drain so you have to use a wet dry back to get the water out. My husband went under there and it was harder to do after the fact and sawed out the block around that so that now we can get our hand under there, clear it so that the water can drop through and we can take a stick or something and clear that drain um, on a regular basis. So think about that when you're setting your pad. Make sure you have a little reservoir underneath the drain and some way to access your electric cord because they are attached to your pumps. Okay, so we'll show you at the end of this video how we change um, the pump on a large one like this. Our smaller one, it's a lot easier to access. Um, it is raised in the air, although ours is hardwired, so it does require electrical work um, to a switch. So, yeah, okay. So we'll get started on that, and um, I hope that these tips have helped you and given you what to think about before you put one of these in, because I, if I had had a guide like this and I had watched a guide like this, I would have really been prepared for what I was going to face with, um with owning one of these. Okay, so this morning I came out to an unexpected um, problem. I skim the fountain every morning before I turn it on and found the electric not working. So we had to take it all apart. Um, we got a shovel underneath it and a block holding it up cocked so that we can get the electric out because whatever happened to the electric overnight has hit the pump apparently and now the pump is only working at about half the pressure so it can't even send the water up to the top of the tube. Okay, so uh, obviously this is the old pump and it's electric line so we can fish the new one through I'm gonna tie a piece of twine to this old cord. Tie it and tape it just in case, because if it doesn't come all the way through, then we're uh, in a bit of a bind. So I'm just gonna, just an extra measure. There we go. Okay, so now we can fish it through. There we go. All right, so now we have our line so that we can pull it, the new cord back through. What we're gonna do now is untie this. That's the old cord, we're not interested in that anymore. What we need is, and just make sure we don't put the same bad pump back in. <laughs> That's the old one. This is the new one. 
or the new old one, I should say. <laughs> yes, because this is actually the old pump. They that... were doing us a favor and giving us a new pump, which didn't last, uh, what, a year maybe, I guess? Yeah. Or I think... Just under a year. Like uh, Nicole was saying, it's kind of like, you know, with a lot of things, electronics, they either work or they don't. We've had our other fountain in the Zen Garden for how many years? Seven, maybe? Seven years, probably, maybe eight. And uh, same pump, never had a problem with it. Okay, so. To be fair, the electric was all off this morning, so something blew our circuit overnight. And. So now so, the, pump, the pump's working, but it's at work maybe three quarter capacity. It's just it's, getting it up to the top, but it's not the kind of flow that we need. So, all right. So now the new cord is taped and tied. So we'll fish this through. Hope it fishes right through. It's a little tight there because this thing is very heavy. So we weren't able to get it off the ground too much. There it goes. Yeah, we just used the edge of a shovel underneath it. Sorry we didn't get it on film to lift it. And we do have, when you set these up, leave a crevice for your electric so you can do this to fish. Because these are things you might not think about. <laughs> Whoops. Almost fell over the, the top. Got stuff everywhere right now. So we found some silicone that's still good. So we're going to be able to silicone this. I'm assuming it'll have to dry for a while before we'll be able to. Um, All right, so we're going to get the old out. Because we don't want there Yeah, to be so any. remove all the old silicone if you're going to do this. So you can get a fresh seal. So your fountain doesn't leak. <laughs> I figure it's a good opportunity to see what maintenance you could be looking at with a fountain this large. The larger the fountain, the more maintenance. Our other one is a medium size, so it's and it's raised above the ground, so everything's a bit easier with that. Dropping the water, draining it, um, things like this are definitely a you know something to think about. <laughs> Okay, so these plugs, unlike the uh, the plug for the drain itself, the plug for the drain itself is solid. These plugs, because you have to have your electrical cord go through it, there's a hole cut for the cord, and it's actually split. So you can just open it up, pop it right on. When you push it in, it's tight, and it seals that, but you want to get it down in there, good. And then put your silicone all around the top there. Oh, you don't put the silicone, then push it in, and then more you don't, silicone? No. You don't really need to, no. Oh, okay. Great. And Good to know. give myself a little bit of slack on the cord because sometimes you want to take it out. There's a filter here, and you can clean it and, and uh, work on it a little bit. Yes. So, and I don't think the at last one had much slack at all, did it? Not much. No, I was having a hard time getting it out this, this morning. This should be, this should, be, this should do it. There. I thought the screen was clogged, and that was the problem at first. So I put my hand in there and tried to mess with it, but there wasn't enough debris in it to cause that problem. Okay, so we're gonna put our silicone in there. Get a nice amount. And there's little crevices there and right up to the the lip here and on the cord okay let that sit um it's thick so probably The best thing to do with it would be leave it dry for a good um, hour or so. 
check and see what the what yeah. the manufacturer on says for it. Good. Okay, always remember if you've done any movement to your fountain to re-level it before you put it back together. It's easy to forget that just putting doing something like that a little prop up changes everything. How are we looking? We are low on the front here. Where you're at? Yeah, like we're off by a little more than a quarter of an inch. But I can tell that when we set it back down, it didn't go, go right where we were. Where yeah, you can tell because we the, you can see the mulch. There's like a line showing all around your mulch. That's how you know you've moved it just a little bit. Or whatever so, you have it set on. If you have it set on something that's movable. If you're on concrete, you're not going to see that. Although you probably have a water line. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Time to scrub it with soap and water. Okay, well thanks for joining me and um, I hope you found this video helpful. They are a joy to own. They're wonderful. I mean, it's, it really makes the environment. Uh, it's so nice having that water sound. Th this one particularly is really loud. Well, both of them are really loud. You can hear them all over the garden, which is so nice. Um, in general, they're an easy way to get in a really impactful water feature without having to build a pond and making that look like it's, it fits into your environment. Although the frog pond, I would suggest everybody build a frog pond. It's been wonderful. I absolutely love it. have had no problems with it and it's barely any maintenance. The thing takes care of itself, but this is an easy way to um, enjoy a water feature, but it is high maintenance. So it's something that you kind of have to weigh. So weigh all of these things before getting one and then you'll get the most enjoyment out of them because you'll know what you're getting into. So thanks for watching and you have a great day.